Shri Guru Bhionamaha. A very warm welcome to another session of uh, Quest uh, interview sessions. And uh, let me begin with a prayer. Om Sada Shiva Samarambham Shankaracharya Madhyamam Asmadacharya Paryantam Vande Guru Paramparam Ishwaru Guru Ratmeti Murti Veda Vibhagine Vyamavatpapta Dehaya Shri Dakshina Mupe Namaha. Today we have a very special guest, Dr. Suman Kollipara, who is joining us all the way from Vancouver, Canada. Uh, very warm welcome to you, sir. Thank you for making time for this uh, program. Uh, Dr. Sumanji is a co founder of a non profit called Peace Tree Innovations. Uh, society, uh, a center for wellness and uh, oneness that conducts a lot of uh, lectures, workshops all around the world on the topic of uh, wellness and oneness using tools of both ancient wisdom and modern science. And uh, Dr. Suman comes uh, especially with a very unique background uh, in veterinary medicine, computer science, and uh, training in meditation, yoga, Vedanta, and the his guru, uh, Sunita Amma. So I'll be discussing all these things uh, with him about his spiritual journey. So uh, let me begin with the opening question, Dr. Suman. Uh, this is the question that I ask all of our guests, that uh, how did it all begin? Uh, tell us about your life journey in general, uh, but with particular focus on the spiritual aspect, uh, what were, who were your early uh, spiritual influences. Uh, so, how did it all begin for me? Wonderful. Namaste, Nitin. Thank you very much for having me on your amazing channel. Uh, you're doing amazing service uh, for the humanity by really uplifting the ancient wisdom and bringing uh, enlightenment, knowledge, and light to the entire humanity through your selfless work. So, um, heartfelt gratitude to all of you, all of the team at Indika Moksha for making this happen. So I'm super thrilled and honored to be uh, here with you. And thank you very much for that warm introduction as well. Um, so your question, who were my early spiritual influencers in my life and a bit about my journey? Um, I was raised uh, in, a, in a small town uh, in Andhra Pradesh called Vikarabad, and then eventually I moved to a city called Hyderabad. Um, but being a small town, life was very simple and uh, easy uh, with not much of uh, influences that come with the modernization and urbanization. Um, and my early influences, I would say as a child, I remember you know, my family um, was attached to one uh, guru called Shiva Bala Yogi. Um, he used to be based of Bangalore and originally from Andhra, but I think eventually settled in Bangalore. So we used to have his picture in our altar room and uh, uh, the vibhuti that was provided. So I still remember as a child, you know, every day in the night before going to bed, I used to take the vibhuti and apply it to everybody's forehead um, and say, you know, may this protect you and, you know, may you not have bad dreams and sleep very well. So just even connecting back to that, I feel there was something inside that I instantly connected to when it came to spirituality or God or divinity, um, just as a kid without having any knowledge, just being drawn to that. Um, and later I remember there was one um, Swamiji who came to our small town. His name was Basavalingeshwara Swami. He was invited to a Shiva temple in our hometown. And uh, I remember he doing all kinds of yogic um, feats and all of that with these beautiful lamps that you used to carry and do this uh, Shiva Thandava, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I got really enthralled, like seeing the balance and power of concentration that he had by doing all these things in front of thousands of people and not losing balance and with the fire in his hands. Like, and then uh, we used to have like multiple forms of fire in multiple forms of jyotis uh, doing all these feats. So that was again, very fascinating that these are the things that kind of imprinted in my mind as a child. And then as I became a teenager, I got influenced with the works of Swami Vivekananda, reading some of his books, 
and then some jiddu krishna murti uh, some of it was clear some of it was not clear the words like consciousness conscious all this used to be like interesting but i did not really make sense of that so but yet i used to read like okay there is something about this. so so i could see i was drawn into some of these at a very early age and then as i got into university um i got introduced into shirdi sai baba so um started following his work reading sai satcharita uh, was amazing experience when i first read it i still remember i had this blissful tears rolling through my eyes and i was very deeply drawn and i did this whole seven days parayanam of uh, satcharita and then i moved to us after that for my higher education for my research um and then life kind of started to take some interesting twists and turns and gone through some turmoil so at that time obviously you were looking for answers and search for you know what is my life why am i here why am i go through going through this suffering why am i going through these difficult phases in my life and uh, being in us obviously the immediate um, availability was some self help books so you reach out to all these modern self help books and then you are like okay it's nice you know talking about self and empowerment and you know spiritual laws and all of these were fascinating but what i also realized were they were all short lived they were yes. like giving momentary kick uh, it's like yes feel good but after a day or two again you get back into the routine of life and then you are stuck again with the same question same turmoil same emotional trauma and i have even moved back to india for a couple of years lived in bangalore and visited you know different places himalayas um again touching all these different aspects of spirituality reading through a little bit but never being able to really get to the essence of it and even though i was not uh, aggressively looking for answers or experiences i think subconsciously there was something going on you know visiting temples visiting ashrams and all of this and for i good i would say a divine plan and purpose i was just moved to vancouver from bangalore and um, within a couple of weeks i have met this amazingly divine human being i did not know about divinity at all at that time i just thought another person her name is sunita amma and uh, i was told that she teaches yoga some form of meditation called sukshma meditation or sukshma dhyana and uh, i said okay i'm going to try and before that i was practicing a bit of yoga some pranayam some breathing which was helping me relax a little bit um so i thought okay it's probably you know there are so many teachers out there that are doing it so i was like she is also from andhra pradesh a telugu speaking person so i thought okay let me go and uh, i have done a session of meditation in her presence and uh, i was just blown away with that experience what i have experienced was for the first time there was this complete stillness of the mind as if the mind was just put on like some shackles and was just held like this usually you know the mind wanders here and there we know it goes into the past it thinks about the future um and even in the present it is carried away with what's going on in the present distracted with a lot of stuff but here there was a situation where my body was completely still mind was completely still and i almost had what you call this transcendental experience of completely merging into something and i didn't make sense of this at all like i knew i was going through something but i didn't know what it was and i said okay fine and then i went back after a few days for another session and then again same experience and then i was doing some of those exercises that she taught the sukshma kriyas very subtle simple things Uh, what i realized is you know what she has done is she has taken the essence of all this ancient yogic wisdom and simplified it for modern hectic lifestyle so that anyone can adopt a lot of times uh, you know especially you know people who are older senior citizens they think oh my goodness yoga is not for me it's very complicated you know all these are exercises that i cannot do so what i have seen is she has taken the essence of all of that simplified and uh, giving it in a way that is easy to digest for this modern hectic lifestyle and uh, and when uh, i was again going back and i was again getting that same experience and then two or three sessions i realized something was going on and even without realizing i felt there i was getting deeper and deeper into a state where 
i could experience the cellular level beyond the cellular level and i myself coming from a background of medical science studying it for you know five and a half years on animals obviously um, as a veterinarian <laughs> <laughs> i was like what is going on here something was going on and i was curious the rational scientific mind was very curious and i also had uh, illness at that time certain illnesses like i said emotional turmoil some worry anxiety you know depressive states and i was getting out of all of that very quickly and i was feeling this elation of joy elation of bliss i would say you know we all go through happy moments they fade off after time we go through you know pain sadness again they fade off so you go through this roller coaster ride in your day to day life but i've realized that after this experience my experience was consistent always in that state of elation state of what you call bliss and nothing would bother me around the world and i felt like i have become a witness to everything rather than becoming involved with everything and all of these later i realized are an experience of what they call awakening or uh, realization of soul or atma and the interesting part is sunita ma never talks about anything she is a very silent person very simple human being she doesn't proclaim herself to be a guru or a master or a teacher if you look at her she'll be like an ordinary friend and and she wouldn't talk about all these great scriptures elaborate lectures simple silence come experience and say namaskaram and go but after that suddenly there was influx of all this ancient wisdom into my life i started to receive you know books and scriptures i started to see for the first time the great adi shankara acharya's works viveka chudamani atma bodha and as i was going through this i was like just blown away because i am experiencing what is written there and the most important of that was what i call aparokshanubhuti the works of great adi shankara where he actually talks about this experience is not pratyeksha or paroksha you know pratyeksha is what you experience right in front of you with the physical body paroksha is what you experience of what you heard or listened through your mind so the first experience is through the body the second experience is through the mind and then the third which is aparoksha anubhuti is a direct inner experience and that is when i started to relate everything together and say oh this is not ordinary what i was going through and the best part was for me it was not you know reading through scriptures you know knowledge and trying to rationalize it dissect it it was first the experience and then all of this scriptures and ancient texts confirmed and affirmed what i was going through and fascinating uh, dr suman this is a very fascinating journey i want to ask you to uh, uh, speak uh, share more about sunita amma uh, you mentioned uh, two or three times uh, uh, now uh, tell us more about her background her lineage um, and how you met her and uh, how the Uh, how it has been any some interesting any anecdotes if you have uh, of your conversations with her definitely absolutely in fact um, you know like i said when i met her i did not know anything about her again she doesn't proclaim herself to be like a guru master teacher nothing and so it was very difficult you know you're going through all these experiences and i'm also seeing lot of others who are coming to her and going through similar experience and most importantly you know a lot of people come to her for physical mental emotional healing and uh, it's not that like she's a healer she's doing some kind of magic or anything it's just that you do certain simple exercises you lie down in meditation in shavasana and then she leaves from that place she goes back to her room she is not around you and then people come to her with all these complex issues and they are getting healed complex illnesses that are getting healed i myself got healed from certain things even though i did not go for healing i did not go for a physical issue um it was just a side effect of the bigger experience a larger experience that was going on there and later i came to know you know that you know by talking to her and understanding about her childhood you know she was born with this already it's not that she has done some sadhana to acquire this she was a self realized 
human being, divine being who came into this world. Um, even very early age, her father, who is also a very deeply spiritual uh, human being, has realized uh, that she was different from others, that she was always connected to that Akash energy, you know, always connected to that vastness of that cosmic universe. And at a very young age, she was drawn into you know, Carnatic music, the Tyaga Raja. And even when she was singing and learning, um, she would literally connect back to Tyaga Raja. She would experience what Tyaga Raja was going through. She was experiencing what everyone was going through. So her, her ability to transcend the body and mind and connect to that subtle vibration. And again, now we are getting into a crux of the ancient uh, you know, wisdom here, that subtle, pure vibration, which is a source of everything. And by the one through which you can know everything else is what I think she was connected to her from childhood. So she would connect to any, any great ancient sage who was realized and be able to know the essence of what they were. And that was going on. And then in, in her teenagers, she went through a near-death experience where she was not eating anything. She was just starving uh, all the time, not because she wanted to do some penance or anything, just naturally, because for her food was that cosmic energy. Her food was the divine, uh, the greater experience. And because of which she became very weak and she went through this near-death experience. She traveled through this light, uh, an immense light. And then she comes out of that. And then even after that, she was in that state of that, what you call bliss and did not eat for a long time. And her father had to literally, you know, force her to start saying you have to consume something to keep this physical body alive. Uh, only then you can actually pass on this to others. Um, I mean, she also comes from a family uh, a lineage of where uh, they were um, very deeply connected to Sri Veera Brahmendra Swami. You know, Veera Brahmendra Swami is another self-realized um, sage who was from uh, Andhra Pradesh uh, in, in the area of Kadapa in Rayalaseema. A great uh, saint who, who wrote uh, uh, what you call Kalagnyanam, who predicted a lot of things in the future. And I've seen a lot of those things in Sunita Ma as well. She would, and then she wouldn't say things very clearly. Like she will say, you know, someone, you know, try to avoid this, do this. And then you would suddenly realize, oh, why she told you this? Um, be, having the pure omniscience, I would say. So these were the things I started to observe as I was going through in my journey. And, and the best part was when I started to see her deep divine empathy. And that empathy is so powerful that she would take pain of others onto her. And it's, she's not doing it because of some technique by doing some kind of mantra, tantra, or magic. It was just that you're there in her presence and then she would take upon everything because what is happening, uh, again, it goes back to this essence of our ancient wisdom of oneness where she becomes one with the other, one with everything around. And when we say one, you need to be able to transcend beyond the body, beyond the mind, and only when you are living in that subtlest of the subtle vibrational level, beyond these senses, beyond this mind, and always in that state of samadhi. And when I say samadhi, you know, a lot of people have a misconception thinking that you go and sit in meditation and you experience some state of euphoria and that is samadhi. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, I think it's a misconception. You know, samadhi is samamaina buddhi, samabuddhi, right? The buddhi, which is always in that state of samatvam. And what is that state of samatvam? Samatvam is a state where you are seeing the unifying force of all. See, Suman and Nitin or somebody else are just a manifestations of that oneness, of that one common element called Brahman or that pure consciousness. And we are all like the water bubbles that are coming out of that ocean of the pure consciousness. But unfortunately, what we do is we get stuck at that bubble level or that wave <laughs> level. <laughs> and we, we, our focus is on that. But ancient series like Sunita are not looking at the body. When I am in front of her, she's not looking at the physical structure called Suman or the mental thoughts and emotions that Suman is going through. She's directly connecting to that underlying consciousness 
and through that she knows what is going on inside and helping us understand and now the moment you connect to that subtle vibration all around that is being transferred to her all around that is being absorbed through her so she goes through the suffering and pain that we go through which again i have you know read through a lot of these ancient sages who were able to do that because they have become one with others and i think even the meditation when i call the the meditation experience you know today of course we call it mindfulness and a lot of other you know <laughs> jargon that come out which is just a small speck or the tip of the iceberg that we are talking about mindfulness is just a tip of the iceberg but the true meditation again in the great uh, aparokshanubhuti adi shankara talks about this and say brahmai vasmiti sadvritya niralambatya sthiti means dhyana shabdena vikyata paramananda dhayini the true meditation is to be independent of everything you are not even dependent on technique your life has become meditation and there is only one one underlying experience that i am brahman aham brahmasmi it is so easy to chant that but to be able to become that that is, is a very different thing <laughs> right so so these are some of the things that i have been able to see in the last 16 years of my journey and discipleship under rare ancient sages and what i have also seen is it is unlike uh, many you know masters and teachers who teach a technique and say okay here is your mantra go do it here is a technique follow it mine was mine and every other who have continued with her is a very ancient form of guru shishya relationship there is no you know teaching specifically and say okay this class i am going to teach you this this class i am going to teach you this it is very dynamic it is very natural and organic i go into a session with her every week and then something comes out of that she knows what i am coming with she knows where to clean that cleaning is where she is very powerful and i think unless that cleaning happens that subtle cleaning of vices that we carry in form of in all this karma krodha loba moha mada matsaryas um, unless we ex- clean that and that is what is happening in sukshma where she is taking upon all our impurities all our vasanas purva janma vasanas all our karmas that we have gone through and then revealing that experience to us revealing that experience after every session you are going through that same experience i think in um, aparokshanubhuti again adi shankara says having the darshana muhur muhur means again and again you are revisiting that experience so that that becomes permanent initially yes i would have that experience i would be in that but again get sometimes distracted with the the, the world outside but constantly going back which again ancient wisdom says brahma vid brahma eva bhavati you constantly are in that state of that vibration it that brahman experience and then eventually you become brahman this is how ancient sages have trained their shishyas continuously keeping them in that state of brahman and then making them an embodiment of brahman so this is you know there is a, i can go on and on entire life to talk about a guru a sage who i am have been blessed with uh, you know again the beauty i think here is i was not in like search like oh i need a guru i need a teacher or a master uh, i feel i am blessed to be given someone who, just by chance and then being able to continue for the past 16 years uh, under her guidance. very fascinating account dr suman it's a, uh, as you said you, you can go on and on and there is no end to this uh, but uh, a uh, moving forward uh, let me uh, direct the discussion in a different direction uh, please tell us about the non profit you have founded uh, peace tree innovation society um, about the activities of your organization and how this uh, your spiritual vision of uh, oneness and uh, and uh, your training has shaped uh, this organization a uh, very good question nitin ji so the moment i have experienced what i have experienced 16 years back um i felt this knowledge this experience has to be 
given to everyone in this humanity even today that's probably the only purpose i live is to help many 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 more who can experience this there are so much of knowledge in form of texts and scriptures and books and lectures but to be able to have the direct experience that aparoksha anubhuti has become the mission of my life and i said uh, well we could do it individually but if we create an, a non profit and then you know bring people together and then being able to spread this knowledge and help many more experience uh, this would be amazing and that is where the seed for peace tree innovation society was sown uh, 16 years back a few students of sukshma have come together um and then we created this sunita am obviously you know she is in silence she is not out there she doesn't like to come out much um so we said okay some of us have to come together to really take this out and we established this and with a very simple vision of wellness and oneness and there is a reason why we did this today if you look at any individual human being any family 90% of them are going through some or the other health issues and most of these issues of course except covid which came as a virus most of the issues health issues that we see are deeply rooted in our behaviors our lifestyles our attitudes these are called non communicable diseases ncds or lifestyle diseases mm-hmm. in fact there are more deaths in the last 2 years with an ncds than covid and they continue to be the predominant reason of deaths and illness in the entire world so we realized that of course as i mentioned sukshma the first thing it does is it instantly gives you that amazing health instantly cleaning happens subconscious cleaning happens people come with addictions people come with um, severe mental disorders anxiety or depression people come with uh, autoimmune diseases i have seen crohn's colitis rheumatoid arthritis all of these diseases are an outcome of uh, lifestyle there is a genetic component to it obviously i understand but even we know today science says that even the genetic component your genes are triggered by the environment which is called epigenetics the environment inside and the environment outside a simple example cancer genes are there in all of us cancer cells are there but whether we trigger it or not depends on our lifestyles so the first important thing that we have been doing in the past 16 years is to simplify that knowledge about mind and body so that a layman can understand what happens is all of this knowledge you know being myself coming from a background of science and medicine uh, in vet- as a veterinarian i i have been blessed to understand this complexity of the body how the systems work how the mind works what are the different components of mind but a layman even like someone like my mother who hasn't you know gone further than her grade 12 let's say doesn't know this and i have seen her uh, going through a lot of illness her own life so i said if i am able to make a difference in her life that would be an amazing thing and then if i am able to make a difference in million more lives like that then that would be amazing right so simplifying that knowledge and using the subtle pure way of cleansing the mind and body to be able to experience that health perfect health was the first step now the second step is oneness why did we create center for wellness and oneness now yes we all know oneness of humanity is important you know vasudeva kutumbakam great loka samasta sukhino bhavantu amazing now that's a bigger picture but now let's come zoom into a two individuals wife and husband parents and children two colleagues in a workplace even between just those two individuals there is so much of divisiveness we can get along with another human being today unfortunately there is such a level of divisiveness now we talk about divisiveness in the name of religion race gender those are all there bigger problems but even between two individuals there is no understanding when two individuals let's say they are all perfectly fine in, in all ways and then you put them under one roof <laughs> in a system called marriage and we know today the state of affairs of marriage state of the affairs of relationships there is divisiveness now the root cause of divisiveness is not all the other things that we talked about it's the mind it is the vices inside the mind 
that are causing this divinness, divisiveness. Is there excess anger, excess desire, excess jealousy, excess uh, ego, false ego, greed? All of these these things are what causes divisiveness between two people. So once we bring that oneness between two human beings in a smaller setting, now that multiplies. It multiplies into your workplace. It multiplies into your, you know, your neighborhood, in your colony, wherever you're living, or into your town, in your village, and to a global oneness. So it was a very practical approach we have taken. And we have started doing so many workshops locally here, obviously in Canada, in Vancouver, um, literally penetrating the system, uh, libraries, schools, uh, prisons, addiction centers, um, organizations, workplaces where there is so much of, you know, issues in form of stress. Um, and we were obviously invited later to World Health Organization, United Nations. Uh, Sunita also visited India in 2017, where Andhra Pradesh state government invited her to do a lot of programs there um, in, in Delhi, New Delhi, um, and different places in, in Bangalore, in uh, S. Vyasa University, Yoga University, in Mysore. So a lot of places, uh, you know, we've been taking this work. And as I said, the mission is to simplify and help everyone to experience wellness and oneness personally and at a global level. Wonderful, excellent, uh, Dr. Saman, you're doing excellent work. Um, in the beginning uh, of our conversation, you mentioned about uh, uh, Sukshma Self-Compassion Meditation that Sumita Amma taught you. Uh, can you tell us more details about this meditation? How this meditation is different from other forms of meditation uh, that are present in the Shastras or uh, taught by many uh, ancient as well as modern teachers, many different types of meditations are taught. And uh, then how, in what way are these beneficial to the practitioners? Fantastic question, Nitin. Absolutely beautiful question. Yes, there are different forms of meditation <clears throat> and a lot of people ask, what is the origin of Sukshma? Where is this? Now, the thing is, Sunita Amma just named it Sukshma. And the reason why she named it, I'll give you an essence. Because of her ability to help people to get to that Sukshma, the Sukshma, subtlest of the subtle. Sukshma means subtle, micro. Now, true meditation, as I said, you know, we talked about that very essence of Adi Shankara's Aparokshan Bhuti. He said, Brahmai Vasmiti Sat Vritya Niralambatya Stiti, right? That stiti one has to experience, that you are Brahman. That is true meditation. That happens only and only when that Sukshma Sarira, you know, our body has the physical gross body, which is called Sthula Sarira. And there is Sukshma Sarira. Sukshma Sarira is your mind, which ancient wisdom, of course, called Mano, Buddhi, Chitta, Hankara. Right? Those are the few things. And then Prana and then Pancha Pranas, Pancha Koshas. All of these make up your Sukshma Sarira. Now, this physical body perishes at some time, but we all know that that subtle Sukshma Sarira continues the journey. And through that Sukshma medium, that subtle body, is what we carry all our memories. The memories which we ancient wisdom calls vasanas are carried through that sukshma sarira. And then we come back again in another physical form and then we relive those experiences. We multiply, we amplify and we go through this cycle of birth and death. And as of course in Bhaja Govinda Madhi Shankaracharya says, punarapi jananam, punarapi marana. So we continue. How to break that cycle of pain and suffering? Unless we break that pain, everybody is going through that. Everybody wants freedom. Everybody wants liberation. Everybody wants that perfect bliss. And I was in that state 16 years back. I was like, I want this permanent bliss, which is not disturbed at all. I don't want to go through this roller coaster ride. That was my seek. That was what I was looking for. But I realized that cannot be attained by patchwork. What we are doing today is patchwork or Band-Aid, we are applying Band-Aid to a bigger cancer. And we are expecting that cancer should heal. And what I realized about Sukshma is, it is not a Band-Aid approach, it's a micro-surgery. And I always call Sunita a surgeon of vibrations. Because 
what happens in sukshma is that subtle pure vibrations penetrate through our consciousness into that sukshma sharira and it you cleans those vasanas and and the beauty is i am so fascinated talking about this it's a practical experience one can see this when i was going through that i could see literally layer by layer being peeled like a onion when you have all these layers you peel one layer and then you get another layer and then you get another layer till everything is clean that is what happens in sukshma meditation you can see oh my anger is going away oh i have a little bit of jealousy that's gone i have a bit of greed that is gone now as these are going away then you become one ekam sukshmam again aparokshanubhuti it says beautifully ekam sukshmam it is the subtle and the one without second and unchanging that ekam sukshmam is what we experience and then again you know you start to realize that you are the one again aparokshanubhuti adi shankara acharya talks about aham ekapi sukshmascha gnata sakshi sadavyaya means i am the only one the subtlest of the subtle beyond all thoughts i am the knower i am the truth which is indivisible and that sukshma is there as a reference in everything even katha upanishad talks about that it says that isha sarveshu bhuteshu gudotma na prakashate that subtlest of the subtle that isha the divine that shining light is there in everyone but it is not revealed that easily it is revealed only drushtya only through buddhya that subtlest of the subtle sukshma buddhi it says sukshmaya sukshma darshibhi means that subtlest of the subtle way of looking at it only can reveal that experience so the difference between sukshma and other meditations and again i'm not trying to put other meditations down or anything the the essence of sukshma is to really get into that subtlest of the subtle layer any meditation that gets to that subtle sukshma sharira and cleans that is the most important now the beauty about sukshma meditation is even though there is which we, we talked about may not be easily absorbed by many there is some complexity to for people to understand the beauty of sukshma is sunita amma has simplified that in a very simplest form you will go to her she will say simple exercises they will look very funny you will think where are these exercises i have not seen this in any other yoga yoga shastra patanjali yoga sutras doesn't have these asanas these exercises but you will see that each of those subtle exercises are so powerful they help in cleansing and then simple breathing exercises and then the foundation of this is self compassion and self love now a lot of people ask why self compassion and self love see in today's world our life is so distracted nitin every moment distraction mobile phone social media family children everything distraction now in this distracted world we have forgotten about this precious resource called that pure self forget about pure self we have forgotten about the body about loving ourselves so the first foundation step in sukshma is self compassion loving yourself filling yourself with love so that you can reveal that love to others filling yourself with that compassion so that you can show compassion to others it is like this flower which if it does not have fragrance it cannot spread fragrance only when that fragrance is inherently there in the flower it can spread it to others so sukshma is about revealing that self compassion self love bringing attention to your heart that hridaya that center in that hridaya is that nectar it is there in everyone nobody is bad in this world every human being is worth experiencing that divine inside but unfortunately it is covered with this layers of impurity and that layers the dust has to be cleansed and that cleaning process and purifying process is sukshma wonderful excellent uh, explanation uh, dr suman uh, that makes a uh, lot of sense you know the, the, the sukshma and self compassion part i think uh, 
um, more and more people should uh, definitely learn this meditation. Uh, it will be very useful, uh, very meaningful to find a meaning in their lives. Um, as we come to this uh, yeah, short interview session, I want to ask one final question, and this is about the books you have written. I think you have written two books. Uh, one is Ancient Sage from, uh, for Silicon Age and Wellness from Within. So tell us uh, briefly about these books uh, uh, for, uh, and where people can procure them. Definitely. Thank you very much for that question. So I always believe, before I talk about the books, it is important um, whatever we write, whatever we say should come from the experience, which again, where I am deeply fascinated with Adi Shankaracharya's works or any great ancient sages or ancient Upanishads, they were outcome of experience. They were not written and then an experience happened. It was similar to my journey. My journey was first there was a revelation that there was something inside, something was going on. And from that revelation came realization. Oh, this is what it is. Now I realize myself. And then in this process, recognition. Now I am relating that with different books, different texts, different scriptures. So it's a three-step process of revelation, realization, and recognition. So I caution everybody who is out there doing a lot of intellectual study to see if you are able to Try to get that revelation, realization, and then recognize yourself with scriptures. A lot of times what happens is when we go to scriptures, we become very dogmatic. And I don't want anyone to become dogmatic even with the two books that I am going to talk about. So just a, a, a word of caution. Let it come from that experience. So even these two books that I have written are not an intellectual exercise. It is an experiential exercise where I was able to share as I was going through every talk, every thing that I have put out or Sunita has put out there on social media is coming from the deep inner realization. So the ancient stage for Silicon Age book is basically my message to the world to help humanity realize that there still exist such ancient sages like Sunita Ma in this modern world and it is still so relevant to the Silicon Age. We think that we are making super fast advancements. We are getting to the moon, to the Mars, and you know, going beyond the galaxies. But unfortunately, we are not able to make that one step inside, one inch inside our hearts. And even if you look at the Silicon chip uh, innovation that happened in, in the past 20 years or more, that that silicon chip, which is an inanimate object out there in the earth, is able to help communicate us. Right now, we are on this call. You are somewhere thousands of miles away, but I can see you in a split of a second right now. And my voice is reaching you in a split of a second, literally because of that silicon chip that is inside. But now, can we imagine the power this life source, this life force could have? And this is what ancient sages have tapped into. They have said, yes, there is this magnanimous universe out there. There is all this gold, silver, metals, and silicon, you, you know, uranium, all these powerful things are there. But there is the most powerful thing, which is ourselves, our inner selves, that Atma or that Brahman, which could help communicate without the need of silicon chip. And I have been a witness to that through my Sukshma experiences. We all have been listening to amazing experiences of great ancient sages who were able to transcend physical world and be able to connect with each other through that subtle vibration. So the essence of ancient sage for Silicon Age is we are today able to depend on a silicon chip to lead our lives. Imagine how much we could benefit if we connect to that subtle vibration, which is there in every aspect of us, which is there here, there, and everywhere. And that's the essence of ancient sage for Silicon Age. And the Wellness from Within book, it's actually released just last month. Um, and this is again going back to what we talked about a few minutes. You know, every family is going through 
any like any of these problems diabetes hypertension arthritis uh, in all of these non communicable diseases and we unfortunately think that wellness is there in a hospital or a pharmacy shop to get a pill and a medicine uh, <laughs> to help heal unfortunately yes it can give you temporary relief i always you know still believe that modern medicine has its place modern pharmaceuticals have its place uh, but there is also these simple illnesses which are make, making our life very complex all that we could do is make a small shift in our habits in our lifestyles in our behaviors and bring that wellness from within we think wellness is out there somewhere but in fact it is the closest to you it is right within but because we are ignoring that and looking for everywhere unfortunately we are not able to find and this book also takes us into a simplified journey of what is yoga what is meditation what is ayurveda all these great treasures that our ancient wisdom has given us so that we can synthesize these different forms of approaches to wellness and create a synthesized form of wellness so that we all can lead a healthy happy and harmonious life and these books are available on our website actually uh, sorry uh, just to continue so they are available in the uh, ebook form people can purchase um, from our website peacetree.ca uh, i think we can put that link also on on the video uh, when we publish on the youtube and people can get those uh, instantly is it uh, are the books available on amazon um they are available on amazon here in north america i'm not sure about india we don't think so but very soon we will be making them available in india as well um uh, very soon uh, okay. on on yeah. different platforms wonderful 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 dr suman it was a very enlightening very fascinating uh, conversation and uh, uh, i think um, the the best part was of the conversation take away for me was uh, you managed to uh correlate uh, certain uh, shastric understanding you you extensively quoted from aparokshanubuti for example and as well as with the practical aspect of meditation and uh, how this truly manifest once once one get into practice so this is the greatest take away and uh, i'm very glad to have you here and uh, hopefully we could do more such sessions in future also uh on the behalf of entire advaita academy and all over us i uh, thank you for making time uh, we are very grateful to have you on our platform thank you thank you very much nitin ji namaste so yes uh, with this we come to the conclusion of petanada session of uh, quest and uh, follow us on facebook and twitter to more uh, no more updates about uh, our upcoming programs uh, with this uh, i conclude the session Shri Guru Pyo Namah.